effect. It has no implication with pole position or world, world orientation, which I think it's pretty cool. Okay, let's let's see. So this is our material, and I'm I'm not going to uh, to make the material part by part. I'm just going to zoom in the different parts, and I will comment. All right. So this is the first parameter. This is just a texture parameter where you can choose what kind of texture do you want. Really easy. And then in, here is a blend overlay. And we will overlay here a color, and this is what will give us this parameter over here, the ability to 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 change the color of our mesh. Well, then again, of course, the alpha goes to the opacity mask, and here's where magic happens. So to start over, the big World position offset node, but take a look at this. Actually, it's not so complicated. And this part over here, it's almost the same. And this part over here that has like two branches are actually this, the same, just with different numbers. Okay, so first we've got a multiply, and then our gradient. Here is our gradient. So take a look at this, and this is how a gradient from white to black is made from the up to the to the upper part to the to the part to the lower part, and it's 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 simply that it's just a gradient. If we plug this on our diffuse and we disable the opacity mask, we'll see it's 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 just that it's a gradient from black to white but it's not a, te a texture and that's the interesting part it's made by functions okay let's put this again <coughs> sorry so when you've made your gradient now you want to multiply everything that is going to come now by this parameter in my case this is a scalar value it's overall wind multiple and this is the what will control the final amount of wind the final combination of soft wind and strong wind I like the default value of 16 and then we continue on here's the main part so starting this, this will control, this will be the soft wind part and this the strong wind part. In soft wind part. Okay. Now we don't want our mesh to move in the in the Z. We don't got, want it to be to go up and down. We want it to be like from left to right, but not upper uh, like kind of bouncing. And this is how it's made this. We first, this append is to get back the Z again. Then the multiply, here's the soft wind ammo, I like the default, this default value, 0 0.2. And here there's a power, and of course the sinus, a multiplier, well, an exponential for the sinus, the mask. To get only the x and the y vectors, and again uh, multiply to to control the amount of panning happening. Oops, what's going on? Oh, okay, it's just making an autosave, I think. Well, we have the panner that will actually make the sinus work. Okay, back again. And then our panel will we uh, the 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 tame node will be plug it into something. And 
we will see later what it is. Okay, now the strong wind. It's the same. This is it's exactly the same, but with different values. For example, this time the power will multiply by the strong wind amount, which is going to be zero point point five. And then again, we have our sinus. We have our strong wind force parameter. In this case is four, the default value. And again, we take do these values. The partner, the strong wind speed, and now the funny part, a rotator. This is what uh, what is doing to have like more variation because we are panning and we are rotating our function at the same time. So it will kind of each time you it will get one of those points and it will make a really 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 interesting random movement, but without having like a really complex simulation and dust what is that group for? alright this is the group because if you don't use this you have a problem and the problem that you will have is that all your measures it doesn't matter if they're going to be instant set or if they're going to be like normal meshes but all your meshes are going to move at the same way every time. I mean, if one plant moves to the left, all the plants in your level will move to the left. And we don't want that. We want kind of to randomize the movement of each mesh, each mesh. So how do we do that? Because UDK uh, doesn't offer like a like a box for saying, hey, here are like a random number. Well, it, yes, it is, but it is, but it seems like broken. But we can actually detect the wall position of our mesh and say, hey, uh, with this position over here, every mesh will have its own number because every mesh, of course, will have a different position. And by making this functionality, we will make one each one of our meshes move individually. They won't be in synchron synchronized or in synchronization. I don't know how to say that in English. But it depends in that if you're going to use your mesh for foliage or instancing, it has to be made like this with position transform node that you can find over here like position transform all right and if you're going if you're not going to use it for an instance then you have to search for what position of the actor that owns this component but the rest is just the same. Of course, you can say, hey, but you can actually plug that, no, in here. So then you have like uh, just two notes and say, yes, I could have done that. But I'm, I guess that depending on the kind of measure that it's going to be, I will need later in the future more functionality here or here, and that's why this parameter this switch parameter is it for instancing is here and not there and um, well uh, so yes uh, this is it this is how this is done and um, well the nice thing about that well the only problem that you will have is because we're not using using the Z in the direction if you have one mesh just in top of the other they will move exactly the same as you can see now they are synchronized but how many times are you going to have this situation in game almost never so I think that it's not something bad and um, well if we compare this system with 
our with Epic Games system and in the foliage map. Uh, let me see. Okay. Okay, for example, this has also wind wind movement, and if we take a look at this, we click mat. Well, uh, we have to detect the mesh first. Okay, so here's the mesh, here's the material. Okay, so here, here is the default wind function from Epic Games, which is really, really, really good because it has kind of a lot but a lot of functionality but take a look at this except this all this is used to control the wind everything everything which you've got a lot of iterations you can control the wind uh, the wind direction, the wind speed, the normal, the position, anything but for for just a simple wind like a little movement, do you really need that? Or for a really strong wind that is like really random, do you really need all this? It works, of course it works. It has a lot more instructions than the one I showed before. But as I say, I'm not saying this this one is a bad one, but for each shadow, uh, you have to have kind of what are you going to use that for? Maybe if you are going to do something simple, you don't need this. And well, uh, that's that's all. And I don't want to be boring. Uh, this is how you achieve the wind speed function and kind of wind feeling. And well, hope you hope you you find this useful and see you in, in the next tutorial. Bye.